Chapter One of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan. Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. Chapter One. Tum Tum Goes Swimming. Tum Tum was a jolly elephant. I shall tell you that much at the start of this story, so you will not have to be guessing as to whom Tum Tum was. Tum Tum was the jolliest elephant in the circus, but before that, he was the jolliest elephant in the woods or jungle. In fact, Tum Tum was nearly always happy and jolly, and though he had many troubles in all the adventures that happened to him, still he had always tried to be good natured over them. So I'm going to tell you about Tum Tum and the wonderful things that happened to him. Once upon a time, Tum Tum was a baby elephant and lived far away in a far country called India, with many other elephants, little and big, in the jungle. The jungle is just another name for woods or forest, only the jungle is very thick woods. The trees grow big and strong, and in between them grow strong vines that is so hard for any living creature except an elephant or maybe a snake to push his way along. A snake can crawl along the ground under the vines. Well, Tum Tum lived in this jungle, and with him lived his father and mother. His father was a great big elephant named Tusky, and he was called this because he had two big, long, white teeth called tusks sticking out of either side of his long trunk, which was like a, a fat rubber hose. Tum Tum's mother was named Mrs. Tusky, but she did not have any long teeth like her husband. Perhaps she had some once and had lost them breaking down a big tree or something like that. Tum Tum had no brothers and sisters. But there were other little boy and girl elephants in the herd or family of elephants where he lived. Altogether, he had a good time in the jungle. One day, Tum Tum, who had been eating his dinner of leaves with his father and mother, heard a loud trumpeting in the woods back of where he was standing. Trumpeting is the noise an elephant makes when he blows through his big trunk, or nose. It is his way of speaking to another elephant. Who's that calling? asked Mrs. Tusky. Oh, it sounds like some of the little boy elephants, said the old papa elephant, as he pulled up a tree by the roots so he could more easily take a bite from the tender top leaves. I hope it doesn't mean any danger for us, said Mrs. Tusky looking at Tum Tum, who was busy finishing his dinner. Elephants, you know, no matter if they are big, are just as much afraid of danger as other wild animals. Of course, they are not so much afraid of the other beasts in the jungles, or the elephants can fight almost anything, even a lion or a tiger. But an elephant is afraid of the black man or the natives, who lives in the jungle, and an elephant is also afraid of the white hunters, who come into the big forest from time to time. I hope no hunters are about to make one of our elephant friends trumpet that way, said Mrs. Tusky, speaking in the way elephants have. Oh, no, don't be afraid, said her husband, eating away at the tree leaves. There is no danger. But, as he said this, he put up his long trunk nose and carefully sniffed the air. That is the way animals have of telling if danger is near. They do it by smelling as well as by listening and seeing. Only one cannot see very far in the jungle, as the trees are so thick. Mrs. Tusky also lifted up her big ears, about as large as ten palm leaves fans, and listened for any sounds of danger. All he heard was the crashing of tree branches and bushes, as some of the other elephants, farther off in the jungle, pushed their way about eating their dinners. Then suddenly some elephants called. Trumpeting through his trunk, Tum Tum, hello, Tum Tum, can you come out and play? Oh, it's some of your little elephant friends, said Mr. Tum Tum to the little boy elephant. I say little, though Tum Tum was really a pretty good size. He was still much larger than a horse. Oh, may I go and play with them, asked Tum Tum, just as any of you might have done. Of course, Tum Tum did not speak in words, as you or I would have done. Instead, he spoke in elephant language, though he could also speak and understand other animal talk, and he could also understand man talk, just as in my other books. I have told you how dogs, cats, pigs, and monkeys can understand what we say to them, though they can't talk to us. May I go out and play? asked Tum Tum. Oh, I guess so, answered his father. 
But do not go too far, and you must listen with the sounds of danger trumpet from Mr. Boom. When he signals that there is danger, you must run back, for that will mean you shall have to go off further in the jungle and hide. Oh, I'll be careful, promised Tum Tum. Elephants in the jungle lived in big families or herds. At the head is the largest elephant of them all, the leader. He is always on the lookout for danger, and when he sees, hears, or smells any, he gives a signal or trumpet through his trunk, and then all the elephants run away and hide. Tum Tum, the jolly elephant, stopped eating his dinner, for he had enough anyhow, and off through the jungle he crashed. He did not wait to go by the path, for he was so big and strong, even though he is a little chap as yet, he could crash through the big thick bushes and even knock over pretty large trees if they were in his way. I'm coming, called Tum Tum to his playfellows. The other elephant said, I'm coming. Tum Tum came to a tree that stood in his way. He could just as well have gone around it, but that was not what he was used to. So he lowered his head and banged into it. Crash over went the tree, broken off short. I'll soon be with you, Tum Tum called again, for he still could not see his little friends. Who's there? he asked. Back through the jungle came the answer. We're all here. Wooey, Gumble Umble, Thorny, and Zunga. They were the names of the elephants with whom Tum Tum played. Oo-ee was a boy elephant. He had that name because he used to make a funny sound, almost like his name, when he whistled through his trunk. Gumbly Umbly was another boy elephant, and he was called that because he grumbled or found fault so often. Thorny was a little girl, and she got her name because she was so fond of eating the tender juicy leaves from the thorn tree. Zinga was another girl elephant. And she was just called that name because her mother thought it sounded nice, just as Tum Tum's mama thought his name was the nicest one in the jungle. I'm coming, trumpeted Tum Tum, and then he came to another tree that stood in his path. I guess I have to knock this one out of the way, he thought to himself, and he lowered his strong head and started toward it. Crack went his head against the tree, but the tree did not break. It was very strong. Hmm, thought Tum Tum. Guess I'll have to pull you up by the roots if I can't break you off. So he wound his trunk around the tree. Then he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until all of a sudden the tree came up by the roots. Came up so quickly that Tum Tum tumbled over backwards, head over heels, smash down in the bushes went Tum Tum, holding up the tree in his trunk. Ha ha, came an elephant laugh from the jungle in front of him. Oh, just look what happened, a voice called. What happened to Tum Tum? asked a third elephant. Are you playing one of your tricks? Someone else wanted to know. Tum Tum looked up from where he lay on his back in the bushes. He saw Hui, Gumble Umble, Thorny, and Zunga looking at him, their mouths wide open, laughing. And then, instead of getting angry and being cross, Tum Tum just laughed at himself. Such a jolly laugh. Ha ha, he giggled. I, I fell over backward pulling up this tree. Did you see me? Did we see you? Well, I guess we did, cried Woo Wee. Well, maybe you did, but I didn't, complained Gumble Umble. Zunga got right in my way when I wanted to look. Oh, I'm sorry, said Zunga. I didn't mean to. Oh, don't mind Gumble Umble, said Tum Tum, with another jolly laugh. He's always finding fault. I'll pull up another tree and fall again, Gumble Umble, so you can see me. Do it if you like. No, don't you might hurt yourself, said Thorny, the other girl elephant. Pooh, cried Tum Tum. I'm not afraid. Well, never mind about pulling up more trees now, said Wooey. We called you to come out and have some fun with us. We're going swimming. Where? asked Tum Tum, as he got up off his back and blew some dust over himself to keep away of the flies. Oh, we're going down in the river, said Zunga. It's so hot today that a nice bath will cool us off. Come on. I better ask my mother, said Tum Tum. I didn't know you were going swimming. When you call for me to come and play with you, I'll go ask her. All right, we'll wait for you. Only don't be all day, said Gumble Umble. We want to go in the water before it's night. Oh, you mustn't mind him, laughed Wooey. I don't know what's the matter with him today. He's always finding fault. Did you get a thorn in your foot, Gumble? That makes you so cross. No, I didn't, answered the other boy, Elephant. But I don't want to stand here all the afternoon in the hot jungle waiting for Tum Tum. I won't be long, promised the jolly elephant. 
He hurried back through the woods to where his father and mother were still eating. Mother, may I go swimming? he asked as he came to where Mrs. Tusky stood. Yes, but don't go so far that you can't hear any calls that may come from Mr. Boom. There's no telling when the hunters may find us. I'll listen. I'll be careful, said Tum Tum. Back he crashed through the jungle, and soon he and his elephant friends were on their way to the river. That was not far from where the herd of elephants was feeding. There's the river, suddenly called Wee, as he caught sight of the sparkling water through the trees. Let's see, who will be the first one in, called Wee, as he began to run. Oh, don't leave us behind, begged Thorny and Zunga. Oh, that's the way with girls, always making a fuss, complained Gumble Umble. Why can't you run like boys? Because you're bigger and stronger than we are, said Zunga. Well, we're not going to wait for you, said Gumble Umble. Never mind, I don't care whether I'm first in the water or not, said Tum Tum. I'll stay with you, Thorny and Zunga. Isn't Tum Tum nice, whispered Zunga to Thorny as it went along through the jungle. Yes, said Thorny. Wooey and Gumbo Umbo hurried on through the woods. Through the woods, and Wooey was the first to splash into the water. I won, he cried. Well, I would have been first, only I stumbled over a tree root, said Gumbo Umbo. Oh, he's always finding fault, it seemed. Into the water splashed the five elephant children. They went out where it was about deep enough to come up to their ears. And then they sucked water up in their trunks and sprayed it over their backs to drive away the flies and gnats that hit them. Then they swam out into deep water and rolled and tumbled about, having great fun. They splashed each other, squirted water all over, and soon were as cool as cucumbers on ice. All at once, though, through the jungle, there sounded a loud trumpeting. Hark! cried Oo-wee, as he stopped squirting water on Thorny. What's that? It's Mr. Boom signaling there's danger, cried Tum Tum. End of chapter one. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter two of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 2. Tum Tum is Caught. Tum Tum and the other elephants who were swimming made no more noise than a fly walking up the window. They all kept quiet and listened. Through the jungle again sounded the trumpet call, Oom Boom 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 Toom. That sure means danger, cried Tum Tum. Come on, we'd better go back to where our mothers and fathers are. Indeed we had, said Thorny, as she and Zunka waded to shore, water dripping from them. That's always a way, complained Gumbo Umble. Just as we are having fun, something has to happen. Look here, exclaimed Wooey. You don't want to be caught in a trap, do you? Of course not, said Gumbo Umble. And you don't want a hunter to shoot you or to carry you away to some far place somewhere, do you? No, I don't. And Grumbo Umbo did not speak quite so crossly this time. Well then, said Ooey, let's do as Tum Tum is doing and start for home. There must be some danger, or Mr. Boom wouldn't have called us that way. Indeed he wouldn't, said Tum Tum, and he did not laugh his jolly laugh now. My mother told me to be sure and listen for a call from Mr. Boom. She said he would be looking for danger, and when he called, I was to hurry home. tum was out on the bank of the river. Now, Gumbo Umbo was the last one of the elephants to come from the swimming pool. Let's hurry, said tum -Tum. That's what I say, cried Thorny. I don't want to be caught by some hunter. The elephant children knew what hunters were for their fathers and mothers had often told them about the natives who tried to catch the elephants. Indeed, some of the older elephants had more than once been caught in a trap, but they've gotten out. Without stopping to put on any clothes, for of course elephants do not wear any, Tum Tum and the others hurried off through the jungle, toward where the rest of the herd was feeding. Several times as they hastened along they could hear Mr. Boom trumpeting, and it sounded as though he said, Hurry along, hurry along, there's danger, danger. And Tum Tum and the others did hurry, you be sure of that. Before the elephant children reached the place where they had left the herd feeding, Tum Tum saw something pushing through the jungle toward him. Look out, he warned his playmate, something is coming. The five elephants stopped short and were beginning to get afraid when, 
All at once, Tum Tum's mother burst through the bushes and came upon him. Oh, I was so frightened, she said, speaking through her trunk. Thought you were never coming. Oh, we heard Mr. Boom, said Tum Tum, and we came as soon as we could. But what's the matter, Mama? Plenty is the matter, or rather, it is going to be, unless we can get away, said Mama. A big band of hunters is in the jungle, and they're coming this way. Did you see them? asked Wee. No, indeed. If we wanted to, they were too close enough for us elephants to see them. They would have been so close that we would not get away. Some monkey brought word that the hunters were on the march, so we're going to start at once and go far off into the deep, dark part of the jungle, where they can't find us. Well, we had a swim anyhow, said Tum Tum. I'm hungry, Mama. Do we have time to eat? No, indeed, said the lady elephant. Well, we'll just have to eat as we go along. You children had better go to your fathers and mothers, she said to Wooey. Gumbo Gumble, Thorny, and Zunga. They're very likely looking for you. So the four friends of Tum Tum started off, and soon the whole herd of elephants was moving off through the jungle, led by Mr. Boom, who had heard of the danger from a monkey friend. All that day the herd of elephants kept on crashing their way through the jungle. They did not follow any path, but made one for themselves. Through the thick, strong vines they pushed their way, breaking down trees or pulling them up by their roots. Nothing could stop the elephants when they were running away from danger. Oh, dear, this is no fun. I'm tired. I'm not going to run any more, complained Gumbo. I don't believe there is any danger anyhow. Oh, but there must be, said Tum Tum. Who is with Hooey? And was hurrying along beside his playfellow, and he pointed with his trunk to Mr. Boom and some of the older elephants, who were leading the herd. Well, I'm not going to go so fast, said Gumbo Umbo. I'm going to stop and have him rest. No, you're not, exclaimed his father, who came up behind Gumbo Umbo just then. I'm sorry, the papa elephant said, but you must keep on. It would never do to stop now, or the hunters would get us. Here, I'll push you along. And with his strong head, Gumbo Umbo's father shoved his son along, whether Gumbo Umbo wanted to go or not. Tum Tum needed no pushing. He was glad enough to hurry along as fast as he could. So were the other small elephants, for they did not want to be caught. Then, after a while, Mr. Boom signaled that they were far off enough now, and need not hurry any more. They were safe, at least for a time. And I'm glad of it, exclaimed Gumbo Umbo. I can't walk another step, and he lay down to rest. All the elephants were tired and hungry. But they had come to a place where there was plenty of food and water. Soon they were eating, drinking, and getting ready to spend the night in it. For it was almost dark. Tum Tum found a nice, cozy place between his mother and father, and soon he was sound asleep. For some time after this, the herd of the elephants was kept on the move by the hunters. Then finally, the men with the guns were left so far behind that there was no more danger from them. Then all the elephants were glad. They didn't have to run through the jungle any more, and they had time to eat and drink. Tum Tum and his friends went in swimming many times, and Tum Tum grew so fat and large and strong that he was soon the largest of all the children elephants in the herd. In fact, he was almost as large as his mother and father, and of all the elephants he was the strongest, except only for Mr. Boom. No elephant was stronger or heavier than Mr. Boom, that was what made him the leader. One day, when Tum Tum had grown to be a big, fine, strong elephant, though as jolly as ever, something happened to him I shall tell you all about now. The herd of elephants was in the forest as before. They were eating away, when all of a sudden Mr. Boom gave the signal with his trunk. Danger, danger, he cried in his deep, booming voice that was like distant thunder. Oh, we've got to run again, cried Mr. Tusky, who was the father of Tum Tum. It is a good thing elephants do not live in houses, and also good that they have nothing to move with them when they go from place to place, or they would have trouble because they have to run away from danger so often. Once again they were on the march, with Mr. Boom in the lead. Now Tum Tum was so big and strong that he was allowed to march at the head of the herd with Mr. Boom. Oh, but I'm afraid to have him there, said Mrs. Tusky to her husband. Nonsense, exclaimed the Papa Elephant. He must learn to take his place. Some day he will be the leader of the herd, and, and he will warn the others of danger. Through the forest jungle rushed the elephants, trampling down the trees and bushes. Behind them could be heard the shouts of the hunters, 
and the firing of guns. There were also the noise of the big wooden and tin drums being beaten and horns being blown. There was also trumpeting of other elephants, tame elephants, for hunters used tame elephants to help them catch the wild ones. Wait, don't run away, you will not be hurt, called the tame elephants to Tum Tum and the other wild ones. But the wild elephants did not want to be caught. They did not know they would be kindly treated by their masters. All the wild elephants wanted to do was get away. So with Tum Tum and Mr. Boom at their head, away they rushed through the jungle. All at once the rushing herd of wild elephants came to a fence in the jungle. It was a strong fence, made of big bamboo trees stuck in the ground. Strong fence that even Mr. Boom, try as he did, could not break it down. When he found that after one or two blows from his head would not break the fence, he called out to the other elephants. Never mind the fence, we can't break through it, so we'll run along beside it. Maybe there'll be a hole in it somewhere. So the elephants rushed through the jungle alongside the fence, just as you might do until you came to a gate or a hole. That was what Mr. Boom was looking for, a hole in the fence. But he did not see any. In fact, this fence was a trap, and soon Mr. Boom and the other elephants knew this. One away from the fence, run over that way, called Mr. Boom. The elephants ran, but soon they saw another fence in front of them, a fence as strong as the first one. Mr. Boom and some of his strong elephants, including Tum Tum, tried to break it down, but they could not. If they had all gotten together and pushed at one spot, they might have broken it, but they pushed in different places. The fence held them back. Never mind, called Mr. Boom. Maybe this fence has a hole in it. We'll run along it and find out. Why can't we turn around and go back? asked Gumbo Umbo of the Tum Tum, behind him, who is now running. Because the hunters are behind us, said Tum Tum. If we turn back, they would surely catch us. The only thing to do is to run on. Tum Tum was beginning to be a smart elephant, you see. He knew many things about danger. But he had only known it. There was something he did not know. And that was that he and the others were, even then, running right into a trap. On and on rushed the elephants. The two lines of fences that had been far apart were now so close together that they could both easily be seen at once. It was like going down a long lane in the cow pasture with a fence on either side. Then Mr. Boom saw the danger. Go back, go back, called the big leader. Elephants, go back. But it was too late. Right in front of the elephants was a big round place like a baseball park with a high fence all around it. A very strong fence. There was a gate by which the elephants could be driven into this park. Only it was a trap and not a park. And there was no way out of it. The fence ran all along except this one hole, and through the hole the elephants were being driven. Go back, go back, cried Tum Tum, waving his trunk at the other elephants as Mr. Boom was doing. But the elephants were afraid to go back because the hunters were rushing up behind them. The hunters had driven the elephants into the trap and were going to keep them there. Up rode the hunters on tame elephants into the trap. They drove the wild ones, Tum Tum and all the others. Alas, we're all caught, cried Mr. Boom. Come, let us see if we can break through this fence. He rushed at it with his big head, but the fence was too strong for him. Into the midst of this wild elephants came the tame ones, with the hunter men on their backs. The tame elephants talked to the wild ones. Be quiet, said the tame elephants. You will not be hurt. See, we were once like you, but we were caught, and we like it. Be quiet. So some of the elephants quieted down, but others rushed about, trying to break through the fence. Tum Tum was one of these. Then, all at once, two tame elephants, with men on their backs, rushed at Tum Tum. Chains and ropes were thrown over his back, and around his legs the chains and ropes were pulled tight. Tum Tum was caught in the trap. End of Chapter 2 Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan Chapter 3 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 3 Tum Tum and Mappo. Tum Tum was not such a jolly elephant as he had been the day he went swimming, or as happy as when he pulled up the tree, fell over backwards, and laughed at his own joke. No, indeed, Tum Tum was feeling really very unhappy now. 
Oh, Mamma! cried Tum Tum. Oh, Papa, what has happened? Mr. and Mrs. Tusky were not able to answer Tum Tum. They, too, as well as nearly all the other elephants, had been caught in the trap. Some of them, like Tum Tum, were held fast with chains and ropes, and others were trying to batter down the fence of the trap with their heads. But they felt that they could not do it. The fence was too strong. Let me go, let me loose, cried Tum Tum in his elephant language. Of course, the hunter men, who had taken Tum Tum and others prisoners, did not understand this talk, but they could see that Tum Tum was very strong and might break loose. Better put a couple more chains on that fellow, said one of the hunters to another. I guess so, agreed the second hunter. That is the finest and biggest elephant we have caught in this herd. At first, Tum Tum thought they must be speaking of Mr. Boom, who surely was the largest and strongest elephant in the jungle. But when Tum Tum looked around, Mr. Boom was not to be seen. He had gotten away. He had turned and run out of the trap, and he was so big and strong that even the tame elephants with the hunters on their backs could not stop him. Away he rushed into the jungle. But he was very sad, for he alone of all the herd had escaped. I wonder of whom they can be speaking so big and strong, thought Tum Tum. He saw two tame elephants with hunters on their backs, carrying chains and coming toward him. Why, why, they must mean me, said Tum Tum to himself. He stopped trying to break down the fence, which the hunters had built as a trap, and waited. Look out for him, said one of the men. He looks dangerous. He looks like a bad elephant. Tum Tum was not a bad elephant. He was very strong, but he was not bad. Oh, Mama, what shall I do? cried Tum Tum as he saw the tame elephants with chains coming closer to him. For all his great strength, Tum Tum was yet only a boy elephant. He was not very wise. He didn't know what to do. Listen, said Tum Tum's father. You are now the leader of the herd, Tum Tum. Mr. Boom is gone, and I'm too old to be the leader. So you must be. We elephants will do as you do. If you can break down the fence and get away from the hunters, we will follow you. I will try once more to break down the fence, said Tum Tum. Let some of the strong young elephants come to help me. Come on, Wooey. Come on, Gumbo Umble. We will smash down the fence. But one of the tame elephants who heard what Tum Tum said called to him and spoke. Oh, brother, do not break down the fence. Why not, asked Tum Tum, who could easily understand the language of the tame elephant. Why should we not break down the fence and let my friends and my father and mother out of this trap? Why not? Because, answered the tame elephant with the chains, you cannot do it. Already you are held with ropes, and soon we will put more chains on you, so that you cannot move. And why would you, you who are elephants like ourselves, why would you do this to us, who never harmed you, asked Tum Tum? Because it is for your good, said the tame elephant. The white hunters are very strong. You may get away from them now, but they will come after you again. It is better to give in now, if you are good, and do not try to break down the fence. You will wear no chains. But what will happen to us, to me and my father and mother, asked Tum Tum. You will be put to work piling teak logs in the woods, said the tame elephant. You will have enough to eat. You will have shelter from the rain and flies. You will have water to drink and to wash in. It's a good life. I like it. Is that all that will happen to me, asked Tum Tum? Oh, perhaps not, answered the tame elephant. You may be sent far across the big water in a house that floats and go, as other elephants have gone, to a circus or a menagerie. The boys and girls look at you and feed you peanuts, too. What are peanuts? asked Tum Tum, who was hungry. I don't know, never had eaten any, said the tame elephant. But one of my brothers, who was in the circus in a far-off land, and who came back here, said they were very good. Now shall we put the chains on you, I and my tame brothers, or will you be quiet, you and your others? Tum Tum thought for a minute. After all, he was caught, and it would be hard to get away, even if he were the strongest elephant in the herd, now that Mr. Boom was gone. Then, too, it might be nice in a circus, and Tum Tum certainly wanted to see what peanuts were like. I, I, I will be good, tame brother, he said. You need not put chains and ropes on me. Oh, you are wise, Tum Tum said the tame elephant. We will put no chains on you and about the others, he asked. 
The others will do as I do, said Tum Tum. I am the leader now. Good, trumpet the tame elephant, whose name was Dunda. My brother from the jungle is wise. So Tum Tum had no more chains put on his legs or back, and those that were on him with the ropes were taken off. So we're not going to try and break from the trap, asked Wooey. No, for we will be well treated here, said Tum Tum, and some of us may go to a circus. What's a circus? asked Sunga. It's a place where boys and girls look at us and feed us peanuts, answered Tum Tum. Well, I will not go to any circus, cried Gumbo Umbo. I'm going to break out of this trap. You must not, cried Tum Tum. I have said that we'd all be good, and I am the leader. Well, you can't lead me, trumpeted Gumbo Umbo as he rushed at the fence of the stockade or trap. But before he could reach it, two tame elephants rushed at him, and Gumbo Umbo was soon bound with strong chains and ropes, so that he could hardly move. It's all your fault, he cried to Tum Tum. No, it's your own, said Gumbo Umbo's papa. Now you must quiet down and be a good elephant. We are caught. We cannot go more to the jungle, but perhaps it is the best for us. So Tum Tum and the wild elephants were thus caught. For a time the herd of wild elephants was kept inside the fence. They were given good things to eat and plenty of water to drink and to blow over themselves with their tusks to cool off. They did not try to get away. But once, in the night, Mr. Boom came as close to the outside of the trap as he dared and trumpeted, trying to call his herd back to him. But they would not go. They were beginning to like it with the tame elephants. In a little while, all the wild elephants, Tum Tum included, were quite tame. Then they were taken out, a few at a time, out to the forest and shown how to pile up heavy logs of teakwood, which is used for building ships and sometimes for making tables and chairs. Tame elephants showed the wild ones how to carry the logs on their tusks or in their trunks and how to pile them up as neatly as you can pile up your building blocks. Tum Tum learned to do this, and also how to push heavy wagons about with his head. He also learned much of the man talk, so that his driver, or Mahout, as he is called, could by a few words make Tum Tum understand just what he wanted. One day, Tum Tum was taken away from the rest of the herd, and he did not even have a chance to say goodbye. He was led up what seemed to be a little bridge, and Tum Tum was afraid it would fall. But it did not. Next he walked into a dark place, and he found other elephants there, some of them he knew. Where are we, and where are we going? he asked. We are in a ship, and we are being taken across the ocean to a circus, answered Wee, who was one of the elephants in the dark place, which was on the inside of a steamship. A circus, good, cried Tum Tum. Now I shall see how peanuts taste. The ship began to move and rock. It rocked and swayed for many days, for it was on the ocean, and then one day a sailor came down to see the elephants. He brought with him a queer little animal with thick brown hair, and this animal chattered in jungle talk. Ha! Huh, I seem to know who that is, thought Tum Tum. Chatter, 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 went the little brown-haired animal as he sprang from the arms of the sailor. Um, um, trumpeted Tum Tum. Then the little brown monkey, for such it was, gave a jump from the arms of the sailor and landed upon the back of the elephant. Hello, Tum Tum, cried the monkey. Why, it's Mappo, exclaimed Tum Tum. How did you get here? Oh, I was caught in a net when I was eating some coconut, the monkey said. I have told you what happened in a book called Mappo the Merry Monkey. Caught in a net, huh, said Tum Tum. That is too bad. I was caught myself, but where are you going? To a circus, answered Mappo. So am I, cried Tum Tum. This is fine. We'll be in the circus together. So the monkey and the elephant were good friends, for they had known each other in the jungle. Tum Tum often had passed under the tree where Mappo's home was. The sailor who had brought Mappo down to see the elephant smiled as he saw Tum Tum making friends with him. I guess I'll leave them together, said the sailor. So Mappo went to sleep on Tum Tum's big back. The monkey had not slept very long before he was suddenly awakened by finding himself almost sliding off. What is the matter, Tum Tum asked Mappo. The ship is trying to stand on its head, I think, said the elephant. Oh, here I go, and he fell down on his knees, while Mappo sailed through the air and fell on a pile of hay.
End of chapter 3. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan. Chapter 4 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan. Chapter 4 Tum Tum in the Circus. With Mappo chattering in his monkey language, and the elephants in the lower part of the ship trumpeting through their trunks, there was so much noise that it is no wonder many of the animals were frightened. Oh, what is it? What is it? Mappo chattered. I don't know, answered Tum Tum, unless the hunters are coming after us again. And raising his trunk, he gave the call of danger, as he heard Mr. Boom, the big leader elephant, give it in the jungle. Hush, be quiet, called an old elephant near Tum Tum. Why do you call that way, brother? he asked in elephant language. There is danger, replied Tum Tum. I must tell the others to get out of here. Oh, that cannot be done, said the old elephant. We're in a ship on the big water. And if we go out now in the ocean, we would surely drown. Be quiet. But why am I tossed about so? asked Tum Tum. Why can I not stand up straight? Because the ship is in a storm, answered the old elephant. I know, for I have been on a ship before. The wind is blowing and tossing the ship up and down. But there is no danger. Only keep quiet. And since you are the new leader of the elephants, tell them to be quiet, or some of them may be hurt. See, down come the sailors to see what is the trouble. Surely enough, down came a whole lot of sailors in white suits to see why all the elephants had trumpeted so loudly and why Mappo, the merry monkey, had squealed. Hush, be quiet, called Tum Tum to the other elephants. Be quiet or I shall beat you with my trunk and make you. When Tum Tum spoke that way, all the other elephants heard him and they grew quiet. Some who had fallen on their knees when the ship tossed from side to side now got up. They placed their big legs far apart so they could stand steadily. We'll be all right when the storm passes, said the old elephant who had spoken to Tum Tum. Mappo picked himself up off the pile of hay, and just then his friend the sailor came to get him. I guess you've been here long enough, Mappo, said the sailor. You might get hurt down here with all these big elephants. Mappo was glad enough to go. Not that he felt afraid of the elephants, but he knew that one of them might, by accident, fall on him. And an elephant is so large and heavy that, when he falls on a monkey, there's not much left of the little chap. Goodbye, Tum Tum, called Mappo to his big friend. I'll come and see you when the storm is over. All right, answered Tum Tum, and I hope the storm will be soon over, for I don't like it. The ship was swinging to and fro like a rocking chair on the front porch when the wind blows, but finally the elephants became used to it, and some of them could even sleep. But Tum Tum stayed awake. There might be some danger, he thought to himself, and if there was, I could warn the others. I'm the leader and must always be on the watch for danger, just as Mr. Boom would be if he were here. But I'm glad to say no more danger came to the ship. I rode safely through the storm. And in a few days it was gliding swiftly over the blue sea. What will happen to us when the ship stops sailing? asked Tum Tum of the old elephant, who seems to know so much. After it gets to the other side of the ocean, said the old elephant, we shall be taken out. We and all the animals, then we shall go to the circus. Is the circus nice? asked Tum Tum. I've been in one or two, and I like them, said the old elephant, whose name was Hoy. There's hard work, but there's also fun. Tell me about the fun, said Tum Tum. I do not like to hear about the hard work. The work goes with the fun, said Hoy, so I will tell you about both. The hard work comes in marching through the hard city streets that hurt your feet. That is when we go on parade. I know, for I have been in many parades, but it is fun, too, where we elephants have a little house on our backs, and men and women ride in it. Then the bands play, and the people laugh and shout to see us pass by. That's fun. And then the old elephant, who has been sent to make the voyage in the ships so that he might keep the new wild elephants quiet, shut his eyes as he thought of the circus days. Is there other hard work? asked Tum Tum. Oh, a great deal, said Hoy. You will have to push heavy wagons about with your head and lift heavy poles as you did in the lumber yard when you came from the jungle, and then you will have to do tricks in the circus ring. What are tricks? asked Tum Tum. Tricks are what I call hard work, but they make the people in the circus laugh, answered Hoy. You will have to stand on your head, 
turn somersaults, and do many things like that. Now tell me about the fun, begged Tum Tum. Yes, there is some fun, spoke Hoy slowly. You will get nice hay to eat and water to drink, and the children in the circus will give you popcorn balls and peanuts. Also, you will wear a fine blanket, all gold and spangled, when you march around the ring in the tent. But now I'm tired and I want to go to sleep. So the old elephant slept, and Tum Tum stood there, swaying back and forth in the ship, wondering whether he would like a circus. It took several weeks for the ship to make the journey from the jungle to the circus land, and during that period Mappo, the merry monkey, came down to see Tum Tum several times. I'm going to be in the circus also, said Mappo, when one day Tum Tum spoke of the big show under the white tent. Are you? asked the jolly elephant. That will be nice. We'll see each other. And will you take care of me so the tiger won't get me? asked Mappo. Indeed I shall, cried Tum Tum through his big trunk. Alas, the day came when the ship reached her dock, and the animals were taken out. The chains were loose from their legs of Tum Tum and the other elephants, and they were hoisted up from the lower part of the ship and allowed to go ashore. Tum Tum was glad of it. He was tired of the water, but his journey was not over, for, with the others, he was put in a railroad car and hauled by an engine. At last, however, he reached a big wooden building, and the old elephant, Hoy, said, This is where the circus stays in winter. Now you will begin to have hard work, and also fun. Well, thought Tum Tum, as with the other elephants, he marched toward the big barn-like building. If there is enough fun, I shall not mind the hard work. Then, as he felt rather jolly after getting out of the big freight car, Tum Tum picked up a piece of stick from the ground and began tickling other elephants in the ribs with it. Oompa, oompa, woompa, trumpeted this elephant. This was his way of saying, Hi there, what are you doing? Stop it. Only that's only in fun, laughed Tum Tum. Well, my ribs are too sore to want that kind of fun, the other elephant said. Now you just quit. But Tum Tum was so jolly that he wanted more fun, so he tickled another elephant. This elephant, instead of speaking to Tum Tum, just reached over with her long trunk, pulled one of Tum Tum's legs out from under him, and down he went in a heap. Ha! Ah, maybe you like that kind of fun, cried the elephant, who had made Tum Tum fall. It didn't hurt me, said Tum Tum as he got up. But after that, he was careful not to play any jokes on the elephants. It was very cold in this new land to which Tum Tum had come, for it was winter. It was not at all like his green, hot jungle, and he was glad when he was led with the other elephants into the big barn where the circus stayed in winter. End of chapter four. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 5 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 5 Tum Tum and Don. Well, this certainly is a funny place, thought Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant, as he looked about him, and well might he say so. He found himself inside a large barn, which was nice and warm. And for this Tum Tum was glad, for it felt more like the warmth of his jungle. And Tum Tum, who had been shivering in the cold outer air, now felt much better. The earthen floor of the barn was covered with sawdust, and all around the sides of the barn were cages containing many animals. There were lions and tigers and wolves, leopards, monkeys, snakes, and many other strange beasts, some of which Tum Tum had seen in his jungle home, and some of which he had never seen before. I suppose this is where Mappo will be put, thought Tum Tum, as he looked at the cages full of lively little monkeys. Then Tum Tum looked and saw a number of elephants chained in a row on one side of the circus barn, and he knew this would be his place. Opening out of the big barn was a smaller one, and there were many horses and ponies. There were many men in the circus barn. They all seemed to be doing something. Some were carrying pails of water to the animals, others were feeding hay to the elephants, and meat to the lions, tigers, and spotted leopards. Tum Tum did not care for meat, but he was very hungry for some of the juicy green leaves that grew on trees in his jungle. As he could get none of those now, he had to eat dry hay, and very good that tasted too. He had grown to like it on board the ship. Bring the elephants over here, called one of the circus men to another, and Tum Tum felt himself being led along by a man who had a stick with a hook in the end of it. 
But the man did not stick to Hook and Tum Tum because Tum Tum was good and gentle now. Tum Tum, though he had been a wild elf in a jungle only a few weeks before, had learned many things since he had been caught. He had learned that men were his friends and would not hurt him, though they made him do what they wanted to do, and ordered him about as though he were a little dog instead of a big, strong elephant. The men did not seem to be afraid of Tum Tum, though he was a little afraid of them, especially when they carried sharp hooks. Come along, cried the man who was leading Tum Tum and the others, and over to one side of the circus barn they went, to be chained by a leg to a very strong stake driven into the ground. Feed them up well, said the first man, and then we'll see about putting them through some tricks. Ha! thought Tum Tum. So the tricks are to begin soon, are they? I wonder what kind I shall do, and whether I shall like them or not. Tum Tum waited anxiously to see what would happen next. What did happen was that he got something to eat, and a little treat in the bargain. From a big pile of hay that was given him, there were some long, pointed yellow things. Ha! Huh, what are those? asked Tum Tum of Hoy, the big tame elephant who had been in the circus before. They are carrots, said Hoy. Are they good to eat? asked Tum Tum. Try and see, answered Hoy, with a twinkle in his little eyes. He was eating the yellow carrots as fast as he could. Tum Tum took one little bite, holding the carrot in his trunk, and as soon as he chewed on it, he knew that he liked carrots very much. Ha! That is certainly good, he said to Hoy. I wish I had carrots every day. Oh, but you won't get them every day, said the old elephant. They are just special. Give you feeling jolly, so you will learn your tricks more easily. Well, I feel pretty jolly anyhow, said Tum Tum. I'll do any tricks I can. He did not know yet all that was to happen to him before he learned to do his tricks. Tum Tum had been in a circus nearly a week before he was taught any tricks. In that week he had plenty to eat and good water to drink, some of which he spurted over himself with his trunk. That was his way of taking a bath, you see. Then one day some circus men came to where Tum Tum was chained, and one of them said, Now we'll take out this big elephant and teach him some tricks. Get hoy, so he'll show Tum Tum what we want done. Ha! So now the tricks begin, cried Tum Tum to Hoy. Yes, and you want to watch out as I do as you are told, or you may not like it, said Hoy. Tum Tum and the old elephant were led to the middle of the circus ring. The chains were taken off Tum Tum's legs, but a rope was put around one of his front ones, and he wondered what that was for. Then Tum Tum and Hoy stood there in line with some other big elephants. All ready now, cried a circus man, snapping his long whip. Stand up! Hoy raised himself on his hind legs, lifting his trunk high in the air. Do as I do, do as I do, called Hoy to Tum Tum. Stand up on your hind legs. I, I can't answer Tum Tum, who tried, but he found he could not. Then a funny thing happened. All of a sudden, Tum Tum found his front legs and head being pulled up in the air by a rope. And before he knew it, he was standing on his hind legs, whether he wanted to or not. The circus man had pulled on the end of the rope, which ran through a pulley, hoisting Tum Tum in the air. That was the way they had of teaching him to stand up. Several times Tum Tum was set down to the ground and hauled up again. And each time he was pulled up, the circus man would call out, Stand up on your hind legs! Stand up on your hind legs! Is this a trick? asked Tum Tum of Hoy, who do not have to have a rope around him to pull him up. Yes, it is one trick, answered the old elephant. There are many more, though, to learn. Tum Tum, beginning to be tired of being hauled up this way, so were some of the other elephants, and one of them tried to break loose. But he was hit with a rope and squealed so that none of the others tried to get away. Now, then, take off the ropes and we'll see how many have learned their lessons, said the head circus man. Now's your chance to show how smart you are, whispered Hoy to Tum Tum. When he tells you to stand up next time, do it all by yourself. Then you'll have learned this one trick. Oh, I'll try, promised Tum Tum. The elephant stood in a row. The head circus man cracked his whip and called, Up on your hind legs! Tum Tum gave a little spring and raised his front legs from the ground. He settled back on his strong hind legs, and there he was, doing just as Hoy was doing. Tum Tum had learned his first lesson, just as he had learned to pile teak wood logs in straight piles. Ha! We have one smart fellow in a bunch anyhow, cried the circus man. Tum Tum was glad when he heard this, just as you would be if you had learned your lesson in school. 
First, it is a good thing to learn to do things, even for an elephant. But if Tum Tum thought he would get a rest after that he had shown that he could do the trick without being hauled up by a rope, he was sadly mistaken. Over and over he had to do the trick until he felt tired, large, and strong as he was. Some of the elephants could stand up on their hind legs for a second or so, and then they fell down again. They were made to practice again with ropes, but no ropes were needed for Tum Tum. Well, that's enough for one day, said the head circus man finally. Give them all some carrots with their hay. Tomorrow we shall try having them stand on their front legs. Will that be a harder? asked Tum Tum of Hoy, as he marched to the side of the barn where the elephants were kept. Oh, much harder, said the old elephant. But I think you can do it. I'll try anyhow, said Tum Tum with a jolly laugh. I think tricks are fun. Standing on his front legs with his hind ones in the air was not as funny as he had thought. In the first place, he had to start with the rope. And before he knew it, it was hind legs were pulled out from under him by the circus men and Tum Tum was almost standing on his head. Poi balanced himself just as he told the other elephants, and soon Tum Tum could do it very well. When this practice was over, and when Tum Tum could stand on either his front or hind legs without being pulled up by a rope, he was given more carrots to eat. Tum Tum can now do two tricks, but as you children know who have seen elephants at a circus, there are many others that can be done. Elephants can be made to sit down in a long, strong chair. They can be made to stand on top of a small tub, to play seesaw, to ring bells, play hand organs with their trunk, and do many other queer things that never had thought of doing in the jungle. Why, I've seen elephants fire cannons, wave flags, and play baseball. Elephants are very wonderful and very wise and lively for such big animals. As the winter days went by, Tum Tum learned many tricks in the circus. He learned to stand with the other elephants in a long row and let the acrobats jump over him. He also let the clown jump right on his broad back. Tum Tum learned to do a little dance, too. But he never danced as well as the ponies could, for Tum Tum was very heavy. Tum Tum also learned how to walk across and kneel down over his master, who lay flat on the sawdust. And though Tum Tum, with his big body, came very close to the man, he never touched him. If Tum Tum had even stepped or even with one foot on the man, he would have hurt him very much. But Tum Tum was very careful. One day, when spring was near at hand, and when it was nearly time for the circus to travel on the road from one town to the other, Tum Tum was out in front of the barn helping push some of the big circus wagons about. He pushed them with his strong head. All at once, Tum Tum felt something bite him on the hind leg, and he heard a barking noise such as, monkeys sometimes make. Is that you, Mappo? asked Tum Tum quickly. He could not turn around, for he was pushing the wagons uphill. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, was the barking answer, and Tum Tum felt his legs nipped again. Stop that, Mappo, if you please, said a big elephant. Please don't do that when I'm pushing this wagon. But Tum Tum's leg was bitten again, and he cried, Mappo, I shall squeeze you with my trunk if you do not let me alone. I like a joke as well as you do, but it's no fun to have your legs nipped when you're pushing a heavy wagon. Stop it. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, came the answer. Doesn't sound exactly like Mappo, said Tum Tum. I wonder who it can be. When Tum Tum had pushed the wagon to the top of the hill, he could turn around. Then instead of seeing merry little monkey, he saw a big black and white dog who was barking and nipping at his heels. Oh ho, so did you, huh? asked Tum Tum. Who are you and why are you biting me? My name is Don, barked the dog, and I'm biting you to drive you away. I'm afraid you might hurt my master. I never saw such an animal as you, with two tails. And Don barked louder than before, and once more tried to bite the elephant's feet. Here, Don, Don, called the man's voice. Come away from that elephant. Bow well, barked Don. I'm going to bite him. Oh, are you? asked Tum Tum. And with that, he reached out with his trunk, caught Don around the middle, and lifted him high in the air. Don did not bark now. He howled in fear. End of chapter 5 Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan Chapter number 6 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 6. 
Tum Tum and the Wagon. Please let me down. Oh, please do, begged Don the dog of Tum Tum, the jolly elephant, as the big creature from the jungle held the dog up high in the air. Tum Tum did not feel so very jolly just then. He did not want to hurt Don, but neither did the elephant like to be nipped on his hind legs when he was pushing a wagon. Oh, the elephant has our dog, cried a boy, who was with the man who had called after Don. Oh, Papa, he will hurt him. No, Tum Tum won't hurt anyone, said the circus man. I'll get your dog back for you, but you must be careful of elephants after this. Oh, we never saw one before, said the boy's father. All this while, Tum Tum was holding Don high in the air in his trunk. Oh, won't you let me down, begged Don. I will if you won't bark at me again and bite me, said Tum Tum. I don't want to hurt you, doggy boy, but I can't have you bothering me when I'm doing my circus work. Oh, I'll be good, I'll be good, promised Don. And with that, Tum Tum lowered him gently to the ground, uncoiled his trunk from around Don's middle, and the dog ran howling to his master and the boy. Don, what made you bite the elephant? asked the boy. Don only barked gently in answer. You cannot speak man or boy talk, you know, any more than an elephant could, though he understood it very well. I told you the elephant wouldn't hurt you, dog, said the circus man. Tum Tum is very gentle. Don crept behind his master and looked at Tum Tum the elephant, walked down to get another wagon to push uphill, as all the circus horses were too busy to pull it. Bow wow, barked the dog, but this time he was talking to Tum Tum and not barking angrily at him. Are you an elephant? asked Don in his own language, which the elephant understood very well. Yes, I am an elephant, said Tum Tum. And you have two tails, went on Don. Almost anyone who sees an elephant for the first time thinks that. No, I have only one tail, Tum Tum answered. The front thing is my trunk, or long nose. I breathe through it pick up things to eat in it, and squirt water through it. My, it's very useful, isn't it? asked Don, wagging his tail. Indeed it is, said Tum Tum the elephant, and the dog were fast becoming friends now, and were talking together, though the boy and his father and the circus men did not know this. Then was it your trunk that you picked me up in? asked Don of the elephant. Yes, replied Tum Tum, and I'm sorry if I frightened you. Oh, well, that's all right, answered Don. I'm all right now. And I suppose I did the wrong thing to bark at you and bite. I'm sorry. Then I'll excuse you, said Tum Tum. But what's your name and where do you live? Oh, my name is Don and I live on a farm, answered the dog. We have a comical little pig on our farm named Squinty. Did you ever see him? I think not, answered Tum Tum. You see, I haven't been in this country very long. And did you bring the pig to the circus? Oh, gracious, no, barked Don. He had to stay home in his pen. But my master, his boy, and I came to see you elephants and other circus animals. Only I never knew what an elephant was like before. Well, now you know, said Tum Tum. So you see you won't bark or bite the next one you see. Indeed, I shall not, said Don. I have to bark at Squinty the comical pig once in a while when he gets out of the pen. And once I took hold of his ear and my teeth. I hope you didn't hurt him, said Tum Tum. No, I wouldn't do that for the world, said Don. And those of you who have read about Squinty the comical pig know how kind Don was to him. So you came to see the circus, went on Tum Tum to Don, as the dog's master and his boy looked about at the strange sights. Yes, yeah, so I didn't exactly know what a circus is, said Don. Well, this is the start of it, Tum Tum said. There are our winter quarters. Soon we shall start out on the road and live in a tent. Then I shall do my tricks. The children, the people will laugh and shout and give me popcorn balls and peanuts. Oh, yum, yum. And Tum Tum smacked his lips because he thought of the good things he was going to eat a little later on. Can you do tricks? asked Don. Indeed I can, a great many, the elephant said. I can stand on my hind feet, so, and up he rose in the air until his little short tail dangled on the ground. Anything else? asked Don. That's a good trick. Let me see you do another. Look, cried Tum Tum, and this time he stood on his front legs and raised his hind ones in the air. That's harder to do, said the jolly elephant. I should think so, agreed Don. I'm going to try it myself. Don did try, but when he went to stand on his front legs, he fell over and bumped his nose. And when he tried to stand up on his hind legs, he fell over backwards and bumped his head. I, I, I guess I can't do it, he said to Tum Tum. 
It needs much practice to do it well, spoke the jolly elephant. Here, Tum Tum, called one of the circus men. This is no time to be doing tricks. Come on and help push some more of these wagons. If the circus is ever going to start on a road to give shows in the tent, we must start soon. Come, push some of these wagons with your big, strong head. I have to go now, said Tum Tum to Don, the dog, for they were now good friends. I may see you again sometime. Well, I hope you will, spoke Don. Your circus is coming to our town, I know, for the barns and the farms over pasted with posters and bills. Then I may see you when you get here, said Tum Tum, as he walked slowly forward to push the wagon pointed out by the circus man. That is how Don and Tum Tum became acquainted as the dog went off with his master and the boy. He barked a good bye to the Tum Tum, saying, If you come near our place, I'll show you Squinty, the comical pig. One eye is wide open and the other partly shut. He must be a funny chap, said Tum Tum. The big jolly elephant pushed into place the heavy wagon. Then it was dinner time, but as Tum Tum was eating his hay and carrots in the animal tent, for he was kept in that, now that the weather was warmer, all at once Tum Tum heard a loud shouting. Look out for that wagon. The tiger cage wagon is rolling downhill. It will turn over, be smashed, and the tiger will get out. Stop that wagon, somebody. Tum Tum heard this shouting and looked out of the side of his tent. He saw a big red and gold wagon rushing down the hill backwards. Oh, I must stop that wagon, said Tum Tum. End of chapter six. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter seven of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This lever box recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter seven. Tum Tum looks for Mappo. Tum Tum, the jolly elephant, pulled hard on the chain that held his big leg to a stake driven into the ground. He wanted to get loose so he could stop the wagon from rolling downhill, maybe upsetting and letting the big tiger out. I know I can stop the wagon if I only take this chain off my leg so I can get out there, thought Tum Tum as he pulled and tugged at the chain and peg. Outside, the tent men were running and shouting. Some of them tried to put stones in the way of the wagon wheels but the tiger's cage was so heavy that it rolled right over the stones. The tiger was frightened and angry, and he growled and snarled, until you would have thought he was back in the jungle again. Let me loose, let me loose, trumpeted Tum Tum through his trunk as he waved it up and fro. Of course, none of the circus men could understand this language, but Tum Tum's keeper knew what the big elephant meant. The keeper came running into the tent. Tum Tum, he cried, I believe you can stop that wagon, stop the tiger cage, get in front of it, and push on it with your big head. That will stop it from rolling downhill. I will, I will, said Tum Tum, only, of course, he spoke in elephant language. As the keeper soon took the chain off Tum Tum's leg, and the big elephant rushed out of the tent and toward the rolling wagon. None of the men had yet been able to stop it, and it was halfway down the hill now, going faster and faster. Inside, the tiger was growling and snarling louder than ever and trying to break out through the iron bars. Look out, he'll get away, cried Mappo, who had run and jumped inside the cage with the other monkeys. Oh, Sharp Tooth will get loose. No, he won't, said Tum Tum, who was now going toward the tiger cage as fast as he could. Don't be afraid, Mappo, the elephant went on, for he knew monkeys are very, very much afraid of tigers. I will let him get you, Mappo, said Tum Tum. On rushed the big elephant toward the rolling cage. He got in front of it, and then he stood still in the middle of the hill, waiting for the tiger's cage on wheels to roll down to him. Look out, Tum Tum, or it will hit you, chattered Mappo. That's what I wanted to do, said Tum Tum, but it can't hurt me, as my head is so big and strong. Now you watch me. On came the tiger's cage. Tum Tum stood there, ready to let it bunk into him. His legs were spread far apart so he would not be knocked over. Bang! That was the tiger's cage hitting Tum Tum on the head. Ouch! yelled the big elephant through his trunk, for he thought it did not hurt him much. He felt a little pain. Then he stood there and pushed so hard on the big wagon that it could not roll down the hill any more. Instead, it began to roll back up the hill as Tum Tum pushed on it. That's the way to do it, Tum Tum cried the elephant's keeper. I knew you could do it. Come on now, old fellow. 
push the cage right back where it belongs. So Tum Tum did. Soon the tiger's cage was in line with those of the other lions, wolves, bears, and other animals, ready for the circus to begin. Oh, but I'm glad the tiger didn't get loose, said Mappo to Tum Tum. I was so afraid. Why were you afraid? The big elephant wanted to know. Oh, because Sharp Tooth the tiger does not like me. I am sure he would bite me if he got loose. Why would he do that? asked Tum Tum. Because I would not let him out of his cage when he and I were caught in the jungle, answered the monkey. Then he told about the time Sharp Tooth had tried to get out of his cage. Never fear, Mappo, said Tum Tum. I'll not let Sharp Tooth hurt you as long as I'm around. Oh, thank you, said Mappo. For several days after this, the circus went from town to town, traveling after dark each night so as to be ready to give a show in the next daytime. One day, Sharp Tooth the tiger spoke to Tum Tum as the elephant was passing his cage. Why did you stop my wagon from rolling downhill? Tum Tum asked the tiger. Because I didn't want to see it smashed and see you thrown out, Sharp Tooth answered Tum Tum. But that is just what I wanted it to do. Get out, spoke the tiger. I wanted to get loose. I'm tired of staying in this cage. But if you got out, you might bite somebody, went on Tum Tum. Yes, that is just what I would do, growled the tiger. I would bite and scratch until the man would be glad to let me go back to my jungle again. I'm mad at you for not letting my cage run on. If you had, I would now be free. Well, I'm glad you're not free, said Tum Tum, as he looked at the sharp tooth and the sharp claws of the tiger and thought of little Mappo. Then I'm mad at you, and I'm going to stay mad, said the tiger, as he sulked in his cage. Tum Tum was not very much afraid of the tiger now, even though he knew the bad animal might someday get loose and scratch him. I don't believe Sharp Tooth will ever get out, said Tum Tum to himself. The big elephant had good times in the circus. He had to do only a few tricks in the afternoon and some more in the evening. Then the rest of the time he could eat or sleep except when the circus moved from place to place. Then he would have to help the other elephants push the heavy wagons up on the railroad trains. But Tum Tum did not mind this. What he liked best of all was to stand in the animal tent before and after his trick performance and watch the children and grown people come to look at him and the other animals. Some of the little children seemed afraid of the elephants, but when Tum Tum saw one of the frightened little tots, he would just put out his trunk and gently stroke the other little boy or girl, so as to show how gentle he was. Then the frightened one's mother or father would say, See, the elephant will not hurt you. Come, give him some peanuts or a popcorn ball. Then the children would hand Tum Tum a peanut, and Tum Tum would eat it with a twinkle in his little eyes. Of course, Tum Tum would much rather have a whole bag full of peanuts at a time, for he could put them all in his mouth and more at once. Still, Tum Tum was glad enough to get single peanuts at a time, and though it was hard work to chew a single one in his big mouth, just as it would be hard for you to chew just one grain of sugar, still Tum Tum was very polite, and he never refused to take the single peanuts. A big ball of popcorn makes something pretty good to chew on, said Tum Tum to one of the elephants chained near him. I like that, don't you? Indeed I do, the elephant said. We never got anything as nice as popcorn and peanuts in the jungle, did we? No, answered Tum Tum, thinking of the days in the dense jungle. Tum Tum wondered what had become of Mr. Boom and where his father and mother and other elephant friends might be. I still suppose they're back in the lumber yard piling up teakwood logs, thought Tum Tum. I'm glad I'm in the circus, even if I did have to be pulled up with a rope to make me learn how to stand on my head and my hind legs. Tum Tum could do many other tricks besides these now, and he was such a jolly old elephant, always doing as he was told without any grumbling, that all the circus men liked him. If there was any hard work to do or any trick that none of the elephants could go through, Tum Tum was sure to be called on. He was the smartest of all the elephants, his keeper would say, and this made Tum Tum feel very proud and happy. One day, there was much excitement in the animal tent, and at first Tum Tum thought maybe the tiger had gotten loose again, or that another big cage had rolled downhill with one of the animals. The men rushed in and called out something. Tum Tum knew it was not that. One of the monkeys is missing, said one trainer to another. It's Mappo, the smart one. Ha! Is that so? asked the other. How did he get loose? He must have slipped out of his cage when we were on the road. Come, we're going to find him. I know a good way, said the keeper of Tum Tum. I shall take my elephant with me. My elephant and that monkey Mappo were good friends. 
If Mappo sees Tum Tum, he will be glad to come back. So we will take Tum Tum to hunt Mappo. Ha! That's good, thought Tum Tum as he listened. Soon the hunt for Mappo began. Many of the circus men started from the wood to look for the lost monkey. Tum Tum went back also with his keeper riding on his back. I wonder if we will find Mappo, thought Tum Tum. End of chapter 7 Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan Chapter 8 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan Chapter 8 Tum Tum and the Fire Through the woods near the circus town went the men looking for lost Mappo. They wanted to get back the monkey because he was such a good one to do tricks, and because the children liked to see him ride on the back of a dog or a pony and jump through the paper-covered hoops. We must find Mappo, cried the keeper who had him in charge. Mappo had ran away, as I have told you in the book about his adventures, because he was afraid Sharp Tooth, the big tiger, would get loose and bite him. In the woods he had many wonderful adventures. He met Slicko, the jumping girl squirrel, about whom I have told you, and also Squinty, the comical pig. Mappo liked Squinty the pig very much, for Squinty was a nice little chap. On and on went Tum Tum and the men, looking for the lost monkey. After the search had gone on for several hours, Mappo, who was walking along through the woods with Squinty, saw the circus men coming after him. Here's where I have to run and hide, said Mappo. Why, grunted Squinty, the comical pig. "'because the circus men are after me. Look!' And the monkey, chap, pointed through the woods to where could be seen some of the men in red coat. "'Oh, look at that funny animal with two tails!' cried Squinty. "'I'd be afraid of him.' Oh, "'You wouldn't need be,' said Mappo. "'That is only Tum Tum the elephant. "'And he's very jolly. He would not hurt a fly. "'I guess he's looking for me. "'But as I don't want to go back to the circus just yet, "'I'll go off in the woods and hide.' "'And I guess I'll go hide, too,' said Squinty for he also had ran away, but not from a circus. He had run away from his pen at the farm, the farm where Don the dog lived. So Mappo hurried off to climb a tall tree. As Tum Tum went along through the bushes, he saw his little monkey friend. Hey, there's Mappo, said Tum Tum to himself, and he hurried on through the woods. Wait a minute, Mappo, called Tum Tum in an animal language, but Mappo would not wait. And Tum Tum could not tell the circus men with him that the lost monkey was just ahead of them. Tum Tum could not speak man talk, you know, and the circus men had not yet seen Mappo, so the little monkey got away. Tum Tum saw a little animal with Mappo, and the elephant said to himself, Ha! That must be Squinty, the comical pig of whom Don the dog told me. I would like to meet Squinty, but I don't see how I can. He can run through these woods faster than I can. Well, maybe I will see him some day, and I do hope Mappo comes back to the circus. It'll be lonesome without him. But Mappo had many adventures before he came back to the circus. Well, I guess it's no use hunting for him any more, said one of the circus men. That monkey has gotten far away. We'd better go back to the tents. Yes, and I think we had, said the man who was riding on the back of Tum Tum. The elephant knew that Mappo was not so far off, but Tum Tum had no way of telling his keeper about it. Back to the circus went Tum Tum. And another monkey had to do tricks that Mappo used to do in his performance that day. What happened? asked Sharp Tooth the tiger of Tum Tum, as the elephant went past the cage of that striped beast. Where did you go a little while ago? I'm looking for Mappo the monkey, answered Tum Tum. Did he run away? asked the tiger. Yes, I guess he was afraid you would bite him. And so I would if I could get him, snarled the tiger. He is to blame for me being shut up in this cage. Tum Tum said nothing, for he didn't want to get in a quarrel with the tiger. Day after day went past in the circus, and still Mappo did not come back. Sometimes Tum Tum was lonesome for his little monkey friend, but there was so much to do that no one in the circus could be lonesome for very long at a time. Tum Tum was learning some new tricks, and this took up much of his time. Each day he was growing bigger and stronger, but he was not a very old elephant when he had been caught in the jungle. Now he was very strong and could easily have pushed two heavy animal cages at once. He was the strongest elephant in the whole circus. One day, 
When the circus was going along the road from one town to another, one of the wagons had become stuck fast in the mud for it had rained in the night. It was a wagon in which rode the hippopotamus with his big red mouth that he could open so wide. Why, the whole circus procession had to stop, or at least all the wagons behind the hippopotamus's cage had to stop, as they could not get past. "'Bring up some elephants and have them pull the hippo's cage out of the mud,' cried the head circus man. He called them Hippo for short, you see. Up came the two big elephants, and chains were put about their necks, made fast to the hippopotamus's wagon. "'Now pull!' cried the circus man, and the elephants strained and pulled as hard as they could. But the wagons did not move out of the mud. "'Pull harder!' cried the circus man, and he cracked his long whip, but he did not hit the elephants with it. But no matter how hard the elephants pulled, they could not pull the hippopotamus wagon out of the mud. Well, what are we going to do? asked the head circus man. We can't stay here all day. Suppose you let my elephant Tum Tum try to pull the wagon out of the mud, said Tum Tum's keeper. My elephant is very strong. Ha! But is he as strong as two elephants? asked the head circus man. Oh, I think so, said the keeper. Let us try. But Tum Tum can push better than he can pull. "'so I shall put him in the back of the wagon "'and let him push it out of the mud with its head. "'Let some of the men steer the wagon in front "'when Tum Tum pushes from behind. "'Very well, we shall try,' said the head circus man. "'The ten horses who had pulled the hippopotamus wagon "'had been unhitched when the two elephants tried to pull it. "'Now the two elephants were led to one side "'and Tum Tum came up. "'Ha! He thinks he can push that wagon out of the mud "'when we two could not pull it,' said one elephant to another. "'Yes, he's very proud,' spoke the other. "'Tum-Tum heard them. "'No, I'm not proud,' said Tum-Tum, "'and I'm not sure that I can push the wagon out of the mud, "'but I'm going to try.' "'His keeper led him up in the back of the hippopotamus wagon. "'It was very large and heavy, "'and it settled far down in the soft mud of the road. "'The hippo was still in it, "'and the hippo was very heavy himself, "'weighing as much as two tons of coal. "'The circus man could not let the hippo out of his cage "'because... He was rather wild and might have run away or made trouble, so they had to leave him in. Now, Tum Tum, you have some hard work ahead of you, said his trainer, as he led the elephant up behind the wagon. Let me see if you can push this out of the mud hole. Um, um, grunted Tum Tum through his trunk. That was his way of saying that he would do his best. Tum Tum went close up to the wagon and stuck his four big feet well down in the mud to brace himself. Then he put his large head against the wagon and began to push. Tum Tum took a long breath, and then he pushed and pushed and pushed some more. Oh, he can never do it, said one of the two elephants who had tried to pull the wagon. Indeed he cannot, spoke the other. Wait and see, grunted Tum Tum, I have not finished yet. So he pushed harder and harder. His head was hurting him, and his feet were slipping in the mud of the road. Still, he kept on pushing. I don't believe your elephant can do it, said one of the circus men. We'd better hitch up about four of them to the wagon. No, let Tum Tum try once more. I'm sure he can do it, spoke the elephant's kind keeper. When Tum Tum heard this, he felt himself swell up inside. It was as though he had a new strength. I will push that wagon, he said to himself. I will push it out of the mud. Then he took another long breath and pushed with all his might on the wagon. Now it's going, cried Tum Tum. Slowly at first, and then faster, the big hippopotamus wagon rolled out of the mud and onto firm ground. There it goes, cried a circus man. Hooray, Tum Tum has done it, shouted another. I told you he was strong, said Tum Tum's keeper. He surely is, spoke the head circus man. But I never thought he could push that wagon. Tum Tum had not thought so for himself. But even an elephant never knows what he can do until he tries. Ha! Huh. I suppose he thinks he's smart because he pushed a wagon we couldn't, said one of the two elephants to the other. Yes, said the second one, but if they'd given us another chance, we would have done it too. But I don't believe they could, and Tum Tum did not think he was smart either. He only felt that he had done what he had been told to do, even though it was hard work, and it did hurt his head. So the hippopotamus wagon was pushed out of the mud, and the circus procession went on down the road. It was not long after that that something else happened to Tum Tum. The elephant seemed to be having many adventures since he came from the jungle. The circus had gone on and on, showing in many different places. 
Tum Tum, in each place, had looked to see if Mappo had come back, but the little monkey had not. Perhaps he was still off in the woods with Squinty, the comical pig. It was a very hot day, and the animals in their cages, and the elephants, camels, and horses in their tents had hard work to get a cool breeze or find any fresh air to breathe. In the west were some black clouds that looked as though they would bring a thunderstorm just before the show began. Tonto was taken out of the tent to help push some of the heavy wagons into place. Oh, look at the elephant, cried some boys, who had no money to go inside and see the show. They were glad to see even an elephant. Tum Tum finished his work of pushing the wagons into place, and his trainer led him toward a big tub filled with water, for he knew his pet elephant would want a drink, as it was so hot. Near the water tub stood a peanut wagon, and the smell of the roasting peanuts made Tum Tum hungry for some. But he knew the children in the circus would soon give him plenty. All of a sudden, some boys who were trying to get closer to Tum Tum ran into the peanut wagon and tipped it over. All at once, the red-hot charcoal that kept the peanuts warm spilled out, and the wagon and some straw near it caught fire. My, it blazed. Fire, fire, cried the peanut man. Oh, somebody put out the fire or all my peanuts will be burned up. Tum Tum looked at the fire and wondered if he could help put it out. End of chapter 8 Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan Chapter 9 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan Chapter 9 Tum Tum and the Balloons Come away, Tum Tum, cried the elephant's keeper. I don't want you getting all excited about a fire and maybe get burned. A few peanuts are not worth it. We'll let some of the tent men put out the fire. Come on. But Tum Tum did not want to go away from the fire. He was not much afraid of it. Most wild animals are afraid of fire. But Tum Tum was tame now, and he knew that though fire burns, it also does good in cooking food, even for animals. Besides, Tum Tum had seen so much of fire since he had come to the circus, and had seen so many flaring lamps of the night performances, that he was not afraid of just a blazing peanut wagon. I'm sorry to see all those peanuts burned up, thought Tum Tum. I wonder if I can't save them. Maybe I'll get some for myself if I do. Tum Tum thought quickly there was a great deal of excitement around him. The straw was now blazing in many places, and the peanuts in the wagon were all in flames. Come away, Tum Tum called his keeper. Fire, 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 yelled the peanut man. Bring water here, somebody, shouted another man. Get a pail, get a pail, one of the boys yelled. Call out the fire engine, said another. But Tum Tum knew a better way than that. His trunk was just like a hose, of only, of course, not so long. He could suck up full of water and squirt it out again, just like a pop gun shoots out a cork. And that was what Tum Tum did. He put his trunk into the tub of water and sucked up as much as he could. Then Tum Tum aimed his trunk right at the blazing peanut wagon and the straw. Whoosh! went the water as Tum Tum squirted it out of his trunk. On the fire it splattered. Hiss! went the fire like an angry snake. Ha! That's the way to do it, Tum Tum, cried his keeper. You know how to put out a fire. That's the way. You're as good as a fire engine yourself. Tum Tum didn't answer. In the first place, he could not talk to his keeper except an elephant talk, which the circus man did not understand. And in the second place, Tum Tum was going to suck up more water in his hose, for the fire was not quite out yet. And you know it is hard to talk when you have your nose full of water, even if you're an elephant. Whoosh! went more water from Tum Tum's trunk on the blazing peanut wagon and straw. Hiss! went the fire again, as it felt the wet water. Fire does not like water, you know. Once more, Tum Tum, one more trunk full, and you'll have the fire out, cried the elephant keeper. Tum Tum dipped his trunk into the tub of water and spurted it on the fire. This time the fire went out completely. Tum Tum had made it so wet with the water from his trunk that it could no longer burn. Oh, what a smart elephant, cried the peanut man. He saved my wagons from burning up. I must give him some peanuts. A few of the peanuts were burned, but there were plenty left, and though some of them tasted a little like smoke, Tum Tum did not mind that. He chewed several bags full, and shells and all, and he was hungry for more. 
But now it was time to go back into the circus tent and have his hand some blankets put on him to take his place in the procession. The boys, one of whom had actually upset the peanut wagon, looked at Tum Tum eagerly. Say, he's a smart elephant, all right, he cried. That's what he is, said another. I'd like to have him. Huh. What would you do with an elephant, asked his friend. An elephant would eat a ton of hay a day. Would he? Sure he would. Well, then I don't want an elephant, said the boy. I guess a dog is good enough for me. Dog can eat old bones. He doesn't eat a ton of hay a day. The boys helped the peanut man turn his wagon right side up, and they also helped him gather the scattered peanuts. Then the man built another fire and went around the tent selling his peanuts. Tum Tum, you are getting smarter and smarter each day, said his keeper, as he led him back to get ready for the parade. I am proud of you. You are the best elephant in the circus. Tum Tum heard what was said of him, but he only flapped his big ears. They were nearly the size of wash tubs. Then he stood in line with his companions and ate the peanuts and popcorn balls the children fed to him over the rope. My, I suppose Tum Tum will be so stuck up and proud that he won't want to speak to us after he's done so many wonderful things, said one of the jealous elephants. He pushed the wagon out of the mud. Now he's put out a peanut wagon fire, and so elephants have all the luck in the world. Tum Tum's eyes twinkled, but he said nothing. He just ate the popcorn balls and peanuts, but he was not at all proud or stuck up. Tum Tum was now such a gentle, tame elephant the children could ride on his back. At first, some of the circus performers who had their children with them let him get up on Tum Tum. And when his keeper found that Tum Tum did not mind, some of the boys and girls who came to see the show each day were allowed to ride up and down the tent. They went on Tum Tum's back, sitting in the little house that was strapped fast to his back. Tum Tum was led about by his keeper when the children thus rode. And very glad Tum Tum was giving the boys and girls his fun, for he liked children very much. Tum Tum would have been very glad if Mappo, the merry monkey, had come back too, right on his back, as he did sometimes. But Mappo was far away, where Tum Tum did not know. Nearly every day something happened to Tum Tum in the circus. Every day he saw new faces, new boys and girls, and once in a while he did some new tricks. He had enough to eat, a good place to sleep. He did not have to work very hard, and best of all, he was in no danger. So although Tum Tum liked the circus life much better than he liked being in the jungle, still, now and then he would wish himself back in the cool, dark woods, smashing through the thick bushes and breaking down or pulling up big trees by their roots. In the circus were some men from India, where Tum Tum had worked in the lumber yard, piling up secret logs and these Indians could talk the language spoken in India, the man language Tum Tum had first learned. He liked to have them come over to see him, rub his trunk, and talk to him in their queer words. One day, another adventure happened to Tum Tum. He was out in front of the circus tent after he helped roll some of the heavy animal wagons into place when he saw some children with their papa coming to the circus. Oh, papa, cried a little boy, couldn't we ride on the elephant's back? And he was so excited, this little boy was, that he danced up and down with his red balloons. All the children had these toy balloons. Oh, I don't believe you could ride on the elephant's back, said the little boy's papa. They can if you will let them, said Tum Tum's keeper. My elephant is very kind and gentle, and many children ride on him. I will hold them on, if you are willing. Oh, let us, papa, cried a little girl. All right, I don't mind, he said. Tum Tum who led close to a wagon from which the children could easily get into the little house on his back, and that they sat with their papa and keeper, and round the circus grounds they went. It was not yet time for the show, and Tum Tum did not have to go in. Oh, what a lovely ride, cried the little boy when it was over. Thank you so much. Tum Tum was glad the children had enjoyed it. Then, as the boy and girls got down from the elephant's back, their toy balloon slipped out of their hands and floated off through the air. Oh, there goes my balloon, cried the little girl. And there goes mine, too, cried the little boy. Oh, Papa. Never mind, I'll get you some others, said the man. I'd have rather have that one, the little boy said, half crying. I would, too, added his sister. Just then the wind blew the two balloons into the top of a tall tree. It was a tall, slender tree, too little for anyone to climb up or put a ladder against. Oh, now we can never get our balloons, the little girl 
as the toys bobbed about in the wind, the strings fast to a tree branch. Then Tum Tum made up his mind, and just as he had done at the peanut fire, I get those balloons back for the children, thought the big, kind, jolly elephant. End of chapter 9, recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 10 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. Chapter 10 Tum Tum and the Lemonade. The little boy and girl who had ridden on the back of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant stretched up their hands toward the balloons that had caught in the tree. They even got up again into the little house and standing up tried to reach their floating toys. Sit down, sit down, called their father. Yes, you might fall, said Tum Tum's trainer, who was also riding in the little house on the elephant back. But we want our balloons, cried the little boy. Yes, our nice toy balloons, said the little girl, and there were tears in her eyes. Tum Tum felt sorry for her. He did not like to see little girls cry. I must get those balloons back for them, Tum Tum said to himself over and over again. I'll get you other balloons, said the children's papa again, trying to make them feel happier. But the boys and girls wanted the same balloons they had had in the first place. Now, if Mappo were only here, thought Tum Tum, he could easily climb up that tree, even if it is a slender one, and will easily bend, for Mappo is not very heavy, and he could go away up to the top of the tree. But no one else can, and none of the monkeys but Mappo is smart enough to do it. So I'll have to get the balloons myself. And how do you think Tum Tum did it? Of course, he could not climb a tree. No elephant could climb, even if it were a big tree. But Tum Tum was very strong, and just as he had done often in the jungle, he wrapped his long, rubbery hose, light nose, or trunk around the tree. Here, Tum Tum, what are you doing? called his keeper. Oomp, 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 Tum Tum answered. That meant, you just watch me, if you please, and you'll see. Then Tum Tum just pulled and pulled his hard on that tree, and up he pulled it by the roots, right out of the ground. The big elephant pulled the tree, and then, holding it in his trunk, he tipped it over so the top branches were close to the children on his back and tangled in the branches with the cords of the toy balloons that still bobbed about. Oh, look, cried the boy, here are our balloons, sister. Oh, so they are, exclaimed the little girl. Oh, what a good elephant he is to get our balloons back for us. I should say he was, cried the father. That is a smart elephant you have, he said to the keeper. Yes, Tum Tum is very good and smart, said the circus man, who reached over, loosened the strings of the balloons from the tree branch, and gave the ends of the cords to the children. Now you may let go of the tree, Tum Tum, the man said to the elephant, and Tum Tum dropped the tree on the ground. Oh, Papa, the elephant was so good to us. Can't we buy him a bag of peanuts? asked the little girl. Oh, I guess so, answered her father with a laugh. And maybe I buy him some popcorn balls, asked the boy. Oh, yes, but I hope Tum Tum doesn't become ill from all that sweet stuff, said the father. Oh, I guess he won't. He used to being fed by the children, the circus man said. So, when Tum Tum heard the boys and girls talking about getting good things for him to eat, the big elephant felt very glad, and he was such a big fellow that he was nearly always hungry. And no matter how many peanuts or popcorn balls he had, he was always willing to eat more. It was now nearly time for the circus to begin, and Tum Tum was led back toward the tent. The children, still riding on his back, holding tightly to the strings of their balloons. They were not going to lose them a second time if they could help it. Near the tent was the same peanut man whose stand had nearly burned up the time Tum Tum put out the blaze with water from his trunk. The boys and girls bought two bags full of peanuts from this man, and from another man they bought popcorn balls. These they fed to Tum Tum, who reached out his trunk for them, and put them in his mouth. Goodbye, Tum Tum called the little girl to him, waving one hand, while in the other she held her balloon really tight. Goodbye, elephant, called the little boy, also waving his hand. I'll see you in the circus, he added. Tum Tum waved his trunk. He was too busy chewing popcorn and peanuts to speak, even if he could have talked to the boy and girl language, which he could not. Later on in the show, 
Tum Tum, as he went through his tricks, saw the little boy and girl sitting near the ring with their father, watching the animals and performers. Two or three days after that, something else happened to Tum Tum, and it made him very happy. He was in a tent after the show, eating his hay and blowing dust over his back now and then to keep away the flies and mosquitoes, when all of a sudden in came a monkey. Tum Tum gave one look at the monkey and then another look. Why, why, cried Tum Tum in an elephant language, that looks like Mappo. I am Mappo, cried the little chap. Oh, don't let him get me. Let who get you, cried Tum Tum. What is the matter for Mappo? Look very, very frightened. The hand organ man is after me, chattered Mappo. And with that, he gave a jump and landed right upon Tum Tum's broad back. Oh, don't be afraid, said the elephant. No one will get you while I'm here, Mappo. Then in came the hand organ man after the monkey, just as I have told you he did in the book about Mappo. But the circus man and Tum Tum would not let Mappo go, and Tum Tum looked so big and fierce and strong that the hand organ man was afraid to try to take Mappo away. So that is how Mappo came back to the circus. Again, after having many adventures, he told Tum Tum all about them. Are you going to run away again? asked Tum Tum. No, I guess not, answered Mappo, hanging by his tail. Tum Tum was glad Mappo had come back, for the big elephant was lonely without his little friend, and I guess Mappo was also lonesome. But Tum Tum, at any rate, they were soon as good friends as before. The show went from town to town, and it was nearing the time for the circus season to be over. Then the animals would be taken back to the big barn, there to stay all winter until spring and summer should come again. One day a bad man came into the tent where the elephants were standing, eating their hay, and held out something in his hand. Tum Tum and the other elephants stretched out their trunks, for it seemed if the man had something good for them to eat, and Tum Tum, being the nearest, reached it first. The thing the man held out was in a bag, and it smelled like peanuts. In fact, there were a few peanuts and shells in the big bag, but besides that, there were also some sour lemons which Tum Tum did not like at all. But he had chewed on them before he knew what they were, not stopping to open the bag the bad man gave him. As he felt the sour juice running down his throat, Tum Tum gave a squeal. He was angry at the man who had played this trick on him. Ha ha! laughed the man. I fooled you that time, Mr. Elephant. How do you like lemons? Tum Tum did not answer. He just reached his trunk into his mouth and pulled out the sour stuff and threw it away. The man laughed very hard at this mean trick, and one of the keepers said to him, You better look out, elephants have good memories, and if he ever gets near you, why he can reach you, you may be sorry for what you did. Oh, I'm not afraid of an elephant, cried the man with another laugh. If ever I can reach that man with my trunk, I'll make him wish he never gave me those lemons, thought Tum Tum. But try as he did, he could not stretch himself far enough to reach the man, for there were chains about the legs of the elephant. Later on that day, the same man came walking past the elephants in the animal tent after the circus was over. I guess he had forgotten about the trick he played, uh, but Tum Tum and the other elephants had not forgotten. All of a sudden, Mago, the elephant standing next to Tum Tum, saw the bad man and reached out her trunk. Mago caught him around the waist and lifted him off his feet. Oh, oh, put me down, oh, elephant, as me, cried the man. Instantly, there was great excitement in the animal tent. The people yelled, and the trainers came running over to see what was the matter. They saw the man lifted high in the air in Mago's trunk. Put him down, put him down at once, cried Mago's keeper. But Mago was not going to do that at once. Now is your chance, Tum Tum, said Mago. I'll hold this bad man who gave you lemons instead of peanuts, and you can hit him with your trunk. No, I'll not do that, said Tum Tum who was very gentle. If I did, I might hurt him, for I strike very hard with my trunk. But I will fix him so he will not play any more tricks on elephants. Then Tum Tum dipped his trunk in a tub of water nearby and suddenly spurted it all over the man, making him as wet as he had gone swimming. Oh, my, oh, my dear, oh, stop it, cried the man excitedly, with the water squirting all over him. Let him down, Mago, said Tum Tum, with a queer little twinkle, like a laughter in his eyes. I guess he won't play any more tricks on us. So Mago set down the dripping man, who was glad enough to run away. 
He did not once look back. Served you right for giving Tum Tum lemon, said a keeper. Some elephants would have done worse than just squirt you with water. One afternoon it was very hot in the circus. It was so hot that the sides of the animal tent were lowered to let in the air. But even at that it was not very cool. Don't you wish we were back in the jungle near some river where we could wade in and float until the sun went down? asked Mago of Tum Tum. Indeed I do, was the answer. But there is no use wishing. Doesn't seem so, spoke Mago, and she fanned herself with her large ears in a way elephants have. I wish I had something cool to drink, went on Mago. Yes, a nice cool drink would be just fine, said Tum Tum. But I don't see where we are going to get it, he went on. Then he happened to look over the side of the tent, which had been let down low, to allow the breeze to come in. What Tum Tum saw made him feel very good. Just outside the tent was a lemonade stand, and on the ground by it was a big washtub full of pink lemonade, the kind they always sell at the circus. Tum Tum stretched out his trunk and found that he could easily reach the pink lemonade. I say, Mago, called Tum Tum in an elephant whisper, I know how to get a cool drink. How? asked Mago. Now don't play any joke on me. I could not bear that. I'm so thirsty. No, this isn't a joke, said Tum Tum. At least it isn't a joke on you. Come, we shall both have a drink. Put your trunk out over the side of the tent. On the ground outside is a big washtub full of pink lemonade. We can easily suck it up through our trunks and drink it. Come on, I'll show you how to do it. Oh, fine, cried Mago. Then she and Tum Tum, not thinking it was wrong, put their trunks down into the pink lemonade and sucked it all out, putting it into their mouths. Oh, but that's good, cried Tum Tum, for the lemonade happened to be very sweet. It certainly is, said Mago. I wish there were more. End of chapter 10 Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan Chapter 11 of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This lever box recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan. Chapter 11 Tum Tum and the Tiger. The two elephants sucked up all the pink lemonade from the washtub near the stand outside the tent. Then they felt much better and cooler. They did not mind the heat so much. But in a little while there was a great sound of someone shouting and calling outside the tent. It was the voice of the man who had made the pink lemonade to sell to those who came to see the circus. Oh, my lemonade, cried the man, my pink lemonade, it's all gone, someone drank it, all up, or else it leaked out of the tub, what shall I do, what shall I do? The man ran up and down trying to find his lemonade, but it was all gone. Say, Tum Tum, said Mago, was that his lemonade we drank? Oh, I guess it must have been, said Tum Tum. But I didn't know it belonged to anybody. I thought it was just standing there in the tub, and that we might as well take it as anyone else. Well, it's too bad if we take taken the poor man's lemonade that he was going to sell for money, said Mago. Yes, it is, agreed Tum Tum, but we can't help it now. Yes, spoke Mago, we can't do anything. Just then the man who owned the lemonade looked up and saw the trunks of the two elephants sticking out over the top of the tent. The man guessed what had happened. Ha! They took my lemonade, man, cried. They sucked it up through their trunks. Oh, they took my lemonade, and I'll make the circus pay for it. Tum Tum's keeper heard the noise the man was making. He came running up. What is the matter? asked the circus man. Oh, you, you, cried the man. Your elephants took all my pink lemonade from the wash tub, where I had ice in it. They sucked it up in their rubber hose trunks. Tum Tum, did you and Mago do that? asked the keeper. Tum Tum could not answer, of course, but the circus man looked at Tum Tum's long, white, ivory tusk, and one of them were some splashes of pink lemonade. Yes, Tum Tum, you did it, said the man. Well, I won't punish you, for you did not know any better, I suppose. What about my lemonade? asked the peddler. Don't I get paid for it? Yes, I guess the circus will have to pay you, spoke the keeper. After all, I'm glad Tum Tum had it, for he has been a good elephant, and so has Mango, and I'm glad they had it. The other elephants wished they had had some also, but there was not enough to go around. The keeper paid the man for the lemonade the elephants had taken, and the man made another washerful, but this time to take care to place it far enough away from the tent 
so the elephants could not reach over and suck it up in their trunks. Well, we made a lot of trouble, even though we did not mean to, said Tum Tum to Mago. That evening, when they were cooling off after the show, but that lemonade tasted good, didn't it? It certainly did, said Mago, with a sigh that almost shook the tent. That night, Tum Tum and all the elephants had to work very hard, pushing the heavy animal cages down the road to where they were loaded on the railroad cars to go to a distant city. As Tum Tum was pushing the cage of Sharp Tooth, the big tiger, he heard that striped animal talking with Roarer, the lion. Can you hear me, Roarer? asked Sharp Tooth, as her cage was pushed alongside that of the king of beasts. Yes, I can hear you, Sharp Tooth, said Roarer. What is it you want? As Tum Tum lifted his ears away from his side so he could hear better, I think something's going to happen, mused Tum Tum. Then Tum Tum made up his mind that he would listen and find out what it was. He knew the tiger and lion were dangerous animals. They had never become tame and were always trying to find a way to escape or get loose from their cages. And if that's what they're trying this time, I'll stop them if I can, thought Tum Tum. So while he was pushing the first tiger and then lion cage along, he listened, though he pretended not to hear anything. What is it you want to tell me, Sharp Tooth? asked Roarer. Listen carefully, answered the tiger. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, growled the lion again. What is it? Be quick. I know how to get out of our cages, said the tiger. If I tell you, will you come with me, and then we can run off into the woods, and there until we can find our way back to the jungle. Will you come with me, Roar? Yes, said the lion. I will. Tell me how to get out of my cage and back to the jungle. The lion and tiger did not know that the jungle where they had lived was many miles away across the big ocean. This is how we can get out, said Sharp Tooth. You know when a man cleans our cages each night, he leaves the door unlocked so the feeding man can follow and put meat in the easily? Does he do that, asked the lion. I never noticed. Yes, he always does that, said the tiger. For a little while each evening, just before we are fed, the doors of our cages are not locked. We can only push them open before the meat man comes to feed it and close them. We can get out then. But if we go before our meat, we shall be hungry, roared the lion. What of it, silly, cried Sharp Tooth. It is not better to get away and be hungry for a little while than it is to stay here shut up in a cage all your life. Well, I suppose it is, said the lion with a big sigh. Then we are to come out of our cages tonight. Yes, soon after the man has finished cleaning them and has left the door unlocked. He doesn't know that I know about the door. I suppose he imagines I think it as tightly shut as ever, but it isn't. Good, cried the lion, then we'll run away. But when? Tonight, hissed the tiger. Be quiet now. Someone may hear us. Ha! Someone has already heard you, thought Tum Tum. So you're going to get away tonight, are you? I'll stop you all right. It would never do to have you loose in the woods. All the people would be scared. Let me see, how can I stop you? Tum Tum wished he could speak man talk so he could tell the keepers what the lion and tiger were going to do. But Tum Tum could only speak animal language. But I can stay near the tiger's cage, and when he gets out, I can grab him in my trunk before he has time to scratch me and push him back in his cage again, thought Tum Tum. By that time, the keepers will come and shut the cage doors. Yes, I'll do that with Sharp Tooth. But what about Roar? I need help there. I'll get Mago. So Tum Tum told Mago about the lion and tiger going to escape from the circus. And if you stand in front of the lion's cage, you won't dare run very far, said Tum Tum to Mago. If you look after the lion, I'll look after the tiger. All right, said Mago, I shall. It won't be right for those fierce animals to get away. Toward evening, when the show was over for the afternoon, Mago and Tum Tum were allowed to roam about the animal tent a little, the chains being taken off their feet. Now's our time, Mago, whispered Tum Tum. You go over by the lion's cage and I'll stay by the tiger's. All right, I will, said Mago. Over she went to stand in front of the lion's cage. The cleaning man had been around and the doors of the cage were open. Then before Tum Tum could get into the tiger's cage, that big striped beast gave one blow with his paw on the unlocked door, pushing it open. He sprang out, crying, Come on, Roar, come on with me. I'm out. Jump through the door and we'll go to the jungle. End of chapter 11 Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan
Chapter Twelve of Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant by Richard Barnum. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kenneth Sargent Gagan. Chapter Twelve, Tum Tum's Brave Deed. Tum Tum tried to get in front of Sharp Tooth and stop the tiger from getting out of his cage, but the elephant was not quick enough. Besides, the tiger moved so swiftly that hardly anyone could have stopped him. Come back here, come back, cried Tum Tum when he saw Sharp Tooth running out of the tent. Indeed, I will not. I'm off to the jungle, snarled the striped beast. Come on, Roar, she called. But Roar could not, for Mago, the big elephant, had placed herself in front of the door of his cage and was leaning against it. And Mago was so big and heavy that Roar could not push open the iron barred door. Get out of my way, cried the lion to the elephant. No, no, I will not, answered brave Mago. Then the lion put his paws through the bars of the cage and scratched Mago. But the lady elephant did not mind that. She made a loud noise through her trunk. And this call brought the keepers on the run. One of them saw what the matter was. Quick, cried this keeper. The lion's cage door is not fastened. He's trying to get out. But the elephant is holding him in. Quick, fasten shut the door. Then the circus men very quickly made the door tightly shut. And that was the end of Roar's chances of getting out. Oh, but that lion was angry. He sprang about the cage, roaring loudly, but he could not get out to go and join Sharptooth the tiger. Some of you put some salve on that elephant's scratcher, said their head circus man. Why well, look to see if any animals have gotten loose? Then he saw the door of the tiger's cage, and he cried, Sharptooth is loose. We must go and find that tiger. Then someone else called, and Tum Tum is gone also. What, Tum Tum gone? cried the elephant trainer. That's so, he said, as he saw that the place where Tum Tum used to stand was empty. I wonder where Tum Tum can be, said the keeper. Mago wished she could tell how Tum Tum had tried to stop the tiger from running away, but how the big elephant had not been in time. However, the head keeper must have guessed it. I don't believe Tum Tum ran away, he said. He must have gone out after that tiger. Come on, we must find them both. As it happened, the circus performance was over, so there were no boys and girls or men and women to be frightened by the hearing that the tiger was loose. Sharptooth was so excited at getting out of his cage that she did not try to bite anybody. She slipped out of the tent and ran toward some woods near the circus lot. But Tum Tum was right after her. The tiger could go along very fast, but the elephant could travel almost as quickly and kept right behind that striped beast. Ha! Go on back. Stop following me, snarled Trap Tooth. Oh, no, I'll not, answered the brave elephant. I want you to come back to the circus. I'll never come back, snapped the tiger. Oh, yes, you will, the elephant said. The tiger kept on, and Tum Tum followed. Finally, the tiger ran up a tree and crouched out on a big limb. Ha! You can't follow me, she said to the elephant. You can't climb up this tree. No, but I can stay here until you come down, said Tum Tum. And that's what I'll do. Bah, snarled the tiger. Go away and let me alone. But Tum Tum would not. He stayed under that tree where the tiger was, for he knew that soon the circus men would come to hunt for Sharp Tooth to put her back in her cage. And surely enough, that is just what happened. The head keeper could easily see which way the tiger and elephant had gone, for though Sharp Tooth did not make much of a track, Tum Tum did. An elephant cannot crash and push his way through the bushes and trees without making a broad path. And this path the circus men followed. Soon they came to the tree in which Sharp Tooth was crouching. There she is, cried one. Bring up the cage. The tiger's empty cage was wheeled under the tree, and the door was open. Inside was put a nice piece of meat, such as a tiger loved. And she was very hungry now. You had better go down in your cage and behave yourself, said Tum Tum. No, I will not, snarled the tiger. But when the circus men snapped their whips and fired off guns and brought blazing torches, Sharptooth was afraid. Besides, she was very hungry, and as the lion had not run away with her, she was afraid she could never get to the jungle alone. I guess I'd better go down to my cage, said the tiger. But, she added to Tum Tum, if I ever get a chance to scratch you, I will. And into the cage she jumped, and the circus men slammed the door shut. The tiger was caught again. Good old boy, Tum Tum called the elephant's keeper to him as they were going back to the animal tent. You saved the tiger from getting away, and that was a good thing. 
or a sharp tooth might have bitten someone. You are a very good elephant. This made Tum Tum feel quite happy, more happy even than did the nice big lumps of sugar and loaves of bread he was given for his supper as a reward. For you know animals like to be spoken kindly to, as well as we do. Boys and girls, you just try it with your dog. Speak harshly to him or scold him, and see how he cringes down and tucks his tail between his legs. He knows when you are not kind to him. And then try speaking nicely to him. Tell him what a good dog he is and how much you like him, and see what a change there is. He will jump up and wag his tail and bark. He is so glad because you are speaking kindly to him. And if you let him, he will try to kiss you with his red tongue. Oh, yes, indeed. Animals know a great deal more than most persons give them credit for. So that was how Sharptooth got out of her cage and how Tum Tum helped the catcher. Again, after the animal cages were never left open, even for a second, did you get very scratched? asked Tum Tum of Mago, when everything else was once more quiet in the animal tent. No, not much, answered the lady elephant. I'm sorry I was not quick enough for the tiger, said Tum Tum. Never mind, it's all over now. Then the two elephant's friends stood side by side in the tent and ate hay, and talked to each other in elephant language. And now my story of Tum Tum is drawing to a close. I shall tell you one more thing that happened to him, and then I am finished. One day, the circus was showing near a large city, and great crowds of people came out to see it. There were boys and girls, more than Tum Tum had ever seen before. The big tent was filled. Tum Tum did all his tricks as best he could. He stood on his head, on his hind legs. He sat up at the table and made believe eat a meal. In this trick, Mappo, the merry monkey, had a part, for he sat up with Tum Tum and they both ate. When the circus was almost over and Tum Tum had played soldier and marched out of the ring carrying Mappo on his back, while Mappo waved a flag, the little monkey could see out of the top of the tent and said, Tum Tum, we're going to have a big thunder shower. I can see the lightning in the black clouds. Well, it will not hurt us, said Tum Tum. We often have to use the thunderstorms in the jungle, and here we are under a tent. Then suddenly the storm came in and grew very black, and the thunder and lightning frightened the big crowds in the circus tent. It rained very hard, too, so some of them tent ropes were made loose and slipped. Run out, quick, suddenly called the man. The tent is going to fall on us. Run, everybody. No, sit still, keep your seats, the circus man cried. But the crowd was frightened and ran. Just then, one of the big poles of the tent began to fall. That pole must not fall, cried Tum Tum's keeper. But how can I hold it up? I'm not strong enough. Then he looked at Tum Tum, the big elephant. Ah, Tum Tum will hold up the pole until all the people get out of the tent, cried the circus man. Here, Tum Tum, he called. Hold up this pole. Tum Tum knew what was wanted of him. He pushed his strong head against the pole, and it did not fall over. Tum Tum held it up, and the tent did not come down. Tum Tum, you are a fine elephant, cried his master. I love you. The rain was soon over, and that night, after the evening performance, the circus went on to another town. That brings me to the end of Tum Tum's adventures, but I have some stories about other animals in the next books I'll tell you about. Don, a runaway dog, his many adventures. As for Tum Tum, he lived in the circus for many, many years, growing older and stronger and wiser every day, and everybody thought he was the jolliest elephant in all the world. End of chapter 12, recording by Kenneth Sergeant Gagan. End of Tum Tum, the Jolly Elephant, by Richard Barnum.